Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan from interstitiallungdisease.info. In this uh, episode, I'd like to discuss a little bit about chronic cough, which is a major problem in patients who suffer with various interstitial lung diseases, no matter what their names are. So they may be having IPF, they may be having sarcoidosis, some other fibrotic lung disease that's very weird. But chronic cough may be a problem for many of these patients, um, especially as the disease progresses and the lungs become very fibrosed and the architectural distortion in the lungs becomes tremendous. So in those circumstances, not having a cough, I would say, is usually the exception. Um, and going together with the breathlessness creates a very bad picture for our patients. Imagine you can be embarrassed by your cough, you cannot enjoy your meal, you cannot talk to your family. We've all had patients who have come to our consultations, potentially in interstitial lung diseases, who um, weren't able to actually tell us what was going on because they had these episodes of coughing during consultation and they felt embarrassed. They wanted to get the most of that, out of that consultation and they couldn't because of the cough. So it's a major, major problem. And I'd like to cover a couple of topics in this presentation. First of all, I'd like to discuss about the fact that not all cough in ILD is related to the ILD. I'm not sure if that makes a lot of sense, but basically there may be multifactorial causes. Um, sometimes patients may struggle with acid reflux, with post-nasal drip, with a cough variant asthma, with... Uh, Potentially, they may be on an ACE inhibitor that's causing the cough. Potentially, they may even there may be allergic to something that's causing the cough. So all these things we need to potentially ask about. And I've been surprised and shocked sometimes by how many patients have told me that no one asked them about rhinitis, about post nasal drip, about acid reflux before coming to a tertiary center for a consultation for interstitial lung disease. So I think dealing with the cough needs to to have a lot of more awareness. We need to be more aware as clinicians that coughing is a major symptom that's really very badly treated in most cases. But anyway, that's my personal opinion on it. So delving into it a little bit, what can we do for a patient who is really suffering with severe coughing episodes um, and have an ILD? First of all, I'd like to talk about acid reflux. So acid reflux has been a rather controversial topic for in the field of interstitial lung diseases in the sense that maybe five to ten years ago, most patients would receive um, anti-acid medication in the form of protein pump inhibitors, omeprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, etc. This was the rule rather than the exception. Now we take a more tailored approach and generally, at least in our center, we only prescribe uh, these sort of medications if there is indeed um, evidence of acid reflux being present. So our patient describes something compatible with acid reflux. Now a main thing that I've heard is that patients do sometimes tell me that um, when they lie flat, they go to bed, they start to cough. That to, to me is an indication that acid reflux may be present. So obviously, because it's first of all a mechanical problem, I wouldn't just jump in with the tablets. I will probably give them the anti-acid medications, but first of all, I'd like to discuss with them whether there's anything else they could be doing non-pharmacologically to deal with the reflux. First of all, I would suggest using gravity in some way to keep the acid within the stomach. So. I would suggest maybe raising the head of the bed, the head of the mattress by maybe 10, 15 degrees by potentially rolling something, some blanket or something, putting something under the end of the mattress basically to, to raise their torso by 10, 15 degrees. Generally, what happens is that if is that patients use more pillows, but generally when you use more pillows, it's just your neck that ends up being raised rather than your torso. So that's why I suggest maybe putting something under the actual mattress to lift it. There are also these triangular pillows that can be found online sometimes that can be ordered depending on what's available in the area of the world where you are in. Now, dealing with the mechanical problem is one thing. Then we also need to discuss whether diet plays a role in reflux. So I know this takes a lot of time, but I think these are important topics to discuss with your patient. Don't just count on the family physician or some other doctor or some other person to deal with these things. I think if you are the doctor dealing with the interstitial lung disease, you should be dealing with these things as well. There's no shame in that. And your patient might be very, very grateful for this advice. So obviously, 
bad diets are present everywhere in the world, unfortunately, um, even in patients with ILD. And I would suggest having a frank conversation about the sort of diet your patient has. So if they are eating a lot of acidy foods, a lot of dairy, uh, just before going to bed, they don't leave a couple of hours potentially between their dinner and their bedtime, I think it's an issue that needs to be addressed. And obviously, improving those things might go a long way towards reducing the reflux in incidentally the cough. Um, obviously, the other thing would be weight. So if your patient is overweight, I think it's something that needs to be discussed uh, in a very respectful way. You don't have to tell them that if you don't lose weight, you will never get rid of reflux or anything dramatic like that. But I think just suggesting that it might improve things uh, will go a long way. And you can you know, request the help of a dietitian if you have that available in your area or if your patient is willing to, to see a dietitian if they cannot imp improve their diets on their own. But other than that, you could provide a leaflet potentially with good dietary advice that you've prepared beforehand. I think that goes a long way. I, in my experience, giving patients something when they leave the consultation, some sort of a leaflet, some sort of a printed page with information that comes from you, their health professional who you know they trust can go a long way so i think that's really a wasted opportunity if we are not providing diet advice to our patients during our consultation even though we are chest physicians we should be able to provide a minimal sort of um, common sense advice regarding diet and i think that helps a lot with many things obviously losing weight helps with breathlessness as well because patients will be able to do more um, physical activity all these things can improve acid reflux and can also improve breathlessness in interstitial lung disease. Now, moving on, I did mention that I'm, I was quite shocked many times by the number of patients who have told me that no one asked them about rhinitis. No one seems to be treating their rhinitis. It's, it's strange because it's a fairly simple thing to treat in most cases with potentially a steroid inhaler that just resolves it and they stop having that post-nasal drip that's really triggering the irritative cough. So that's one thing that's worth asking and potentially prescribing something for your patient to help them deal with that problem. Asking them also about any allergens in the house, in the environment, at work, something that's really blocking their nose, triggering that rhinitis. And if you are still struggling, I think asking for an ENT, uh, not all laryngology opinion, is really, really important and may actually improve things dramatically. Now, obviously, we are chest physicians, so we're not only dealing with ILD in many cases. Asthma is a fairly common chest problem as well. So some of the patients we are treating for ILD may also have cough variant asthma or other forms of asthma. So that can also be a cause of the cough, which can potentially be improved with the right inhaler, with the right inhaler technique. So all these things need to be checked as well. Uh, the other thing would be medication. I did mention that, obviously, if your patient is on, on an ACE inhibitor, it's something that maybe it's worth considering whether it could be a cause of the cough, um, especially if they've recently started on that medication, they've developed a cough a couple of months after, you know, that may be relevant as well. And obviously, the other thing would be if there's any sort of other issue that's going on. Are they inhaling any dusts, any fumes, something that's really, really making the cough worse. So that's something that's worth dealing with. Smoking, if your patient's still smoking, obviously advise them to quit. That will probably improve things as well. And all these things that I've mentioned so far have nothing to do with ILD, as you can say. Now, obviously, coming back to the ILD, what do we do if we've ruled out many things, we've tried to prescribe things to deal with the multifactorial causes of chronic cough? What's next? So next, we need to consider that maybe it's just the ILD itself that's actually triggering the cough. And in that situation, we have a few options. First of all, we have very simple non-pharmacological options. This is where talking to your patients and having good report does help because sometimes cough can be also psychogenic, not necessarily that it's triggered psychologically, but it can play a role. So potentially referring your patient for some cognitive behavioral therapy can help. This is one thing that may sound a little bit uh, out there, but um, it does help many patients deal with symptoms. 
Um, because once you get into those episodes of coughing, 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 it's really, really hard to stop. It's also a vicious circle. So you can imagine that irritation can in the throat because of the coughing can happen. So if we cough, 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 we our throats will become swollen and irritated and will cough even more. Anything will trigger our cough. So obviously, if we can break that cycle somehow, whether through some therapy, which can help, or even simple measures such as uh, eating something that's emollient, for example, taking a spoonful of honey or uh, sucking on a sweet lozenge, something that soothes the throat a little bit, um, maybe non-medicated cough syrups, things like that may actually help improve the cough and break those episodes of very, very severe dry cough. That can help a lot. So these are things I would try in the first instance. Then the other thing we are doing in our center is obviously to prescribe all kinds of opioid based treatments. We do prescribe morphine sulf sulfate tablets at a low dose. Uh, generally opioids in ILD also deal with the breathlessness quite well. So it's a treatment that can help with both things, but be wary of sedation, be wary of constipation as side effects, and maybe discuss with your patient if it's really, really helping them. Uh, many patients are though, I would say a little bit wary about taking opioids. They find it as some sort of a terminal treatment. So this is something that you might need to discuss with your patient to go around these sort of limiting beliefs because it can actually help a lot to have low doses of morphine to treat deal with the cough and to deal with the breathlessness. So besides the morphine tablets, sometimes it does help to prescribe liquid morphine, liquid oral morphine, very low doses as needed a few times a day can help with those episodes of coughing and ensure that our patients have a good quality of life and also deals with the breathlessness as well, like I mentioned. The other thing would be, depending on where you are in the world, obviously, to try other forms of uh, cough suppressants. So uh, dextromethorphan-based uh, cough syrups potentially could be tried. Um, the other thing would be codeine tablets. You know, it depends on where you are in the world. You have different policies. So I've seen it. Um, I've seen different ways of prescribing opioids for opioid-based treatments to deal with coughing. The final thing I would like to suggest is that depending on where you are again in the world, you may have access to cough trials. So clinical trials in which new agents to suppress coughing are being tested. And I think it's an option that your patients should have available should they want to participate in research and potentially try new medications to control their cough. Because there are, for example, opioids that are being uh, tested in clinical trials at the moment that have very little in this way of usual opioid side effects, but they do control the cough quite well. So I think these are options that your patients should have available. Um, there are other things that are being tested that I've heard, like chromoglycate or other other such therapies. So I think it's worth looking at cough trials as a whole and see whether there's anything in your area that would be available for your patient. So these are a couple of suggestions that hopefully will help you better deal with the cough in your patients. If you found this helpful, you know, uh, leave a comment below or maybe if you have other suggestions from your own practice, I'd be happy to, to hear your suggestions. So you can leave a comment potentially on the YouTube channel below the video if that's you know, something you'd want to do. And I don't have all the answers, obviously. So I do try to record this podcast, these videos, but I am happy to learn from other people as well because this is how we all get better as practitioners in this field of interstitial lung disease. And as doctors overall, I think we should all be learning from each other to provide you know, better outcomes for our patients. So thank you again for watching this episode and hopefully it was helpful for you and I'll see you in future um, episodes and materials. All the best.